a whistle before the ball can be thrown in, and they call Tom Fold for charging into Keith Roberts. And so the ball goes back over. It will not be a player control foul. Roberts will have a free throw. Roberts will have a free throw with 36 seconds left. Now they're asking, was it player control? Should they get the ball or do they get the free throw? Dan Bruno asking that question. And Gary Easley is going to come over and explain. And he will tell Greg Boer. And Gary says, no, they did a free throw. And the college high coaches don't exactly buy that decision, but nonetheless, the guys in the striped shirt have the only vote that counts. And then he will have a one and one here for Keith Roberts. Big free throws. Keith hasn't been at the line yet tonight. Shot is in the air, short, and Kalachai rebound. And Kalachai gets the ball back. Now Keck with the ball with 30 seconds to go. 58-58 time. Keck across the 10-second line. Now off to Brighton, off, almost lost it and got it back. Ball was down between his legs. Off to Pryor, 21 seconds to go, and Sooner steals the ball. And calls time with 17 seconds left. So Kali Chai has not handled the ball well inside in these last few seconds. And Sooner keeps getting their chances. Tim Carson calls timeout. He and Gary Vaught huddle to decide what they want to do, and then they'll tell the players. 17 seconds to play in the basketball game, a 58-58 tie. And Dodd, neither team has grabbed big surges of momentum. Kali Chai had the momentum, I thought, about a minute ago. Now Sooner, I think, has it well, back. That's exactly right. I thought Kali Chai might be in the driver's seat to pull off the big upset here. But uh, right now, Sooner's really got a good uh, position because they've got the ball with 17 seconds going. Uh, Kali Chai's made two straight turnovers in this ball game. It's going to cost them the ball game, maybe. But uh, anything can happen. A lot can happen in 17 seconds. And uh, don't count Kali Chai out. But, uh, this is what basketball is all about, going right down to the wire, which we anticipate it would go down to. Both teams still huddle around the coaches. 17 seconds left on the clock. Sooner will probably. Well, I'm going to try to guess that they're going to kill a few seconds off. I, I don't I don't know if they've got another timeout. I think Sooner's got one timeout to call. But I look for them to go inside to Clark Meese. He's been their bread and butter all night long. And he at least has a chance of drawing the fouls and has an excellent chance of putting in a good percentage shot. So here we go. College High will apply pressure at midcourt. They will not contest the inbound pass, which comes from Keith Roberts to Jay Hubbard. Then back to Keith. 13 seconds to go. 58-58 time. They come down to a final shot. Roberts with 8 seconds to go. Hubbard has the ball with 6 seconds to go. Heron with 4 to go. And now with 3 to go, 2 to go, 1 to go, and they will not get the shot up, I don't think. It doesn't go. Overtime. They couldn't see the clock. Sooner couldn't see the clock and didn't know exactly how much time was left. Hubbard had a shot up. The official was signaling as he traveled to the basket. No, it was not in time. So it's overtime. 58-58. At the end of regulation play, we'll be back after messages from the sports guys. It is overtime here at the Adams Building. 58-58. College Eye and Sooner. Sooner just let the clock get away from them. The players... We're going to the basket that does not face the clock here at the Adams Building, and they just let the time get away. By the time they realize that Hubbard hurried, he shot it anyway. Pryor versus Blackman in the center ring. They will jump. And the tip is going to go to College High. Bob right off. He races to the College High basket, stops at the baseline, turns back outside. Three-minute overtime now, remember? Out to Jackson in the corner. Off to Scott Keck. College High looking like they want to play the spread offense. Well, both teams have had their chances. Jackson inside, high post. Guarded by Clark Meese. John takes it out to the deep left corner. And a ball stolen away by Clark. Long lead pass to Hubbard. Here comes Jay. He drives, shoots, and missed. But a follow shot goes in, but it will not count. Now a foul was called. And let's see if it will go. If it's on Brighton, Dolph Bob is fouled out of the ball game. And it is on Bob as he fouled Jay Hubbard going in. And Breitendorf had his best offensive game of the season tonight with 27 points. He fouls out with 2.32 remaining in the first overtime. And Hubbard to the line. Jack Hunter hit 30 tonight for Dewey. Top game for any dogger this season. And Dewey wins 83-72. Well, College High started the fourth quarter by hitting their first seven shots and shot themselves back into this ballgame. 
Had a five-point lead at one time, but Clark Meese, who at one time rolled off personally 12 straight Sooner points, got them back into it. Hubbard one and one at the line. If you third, turns his second. And that's Jay's first point tonight. We're in overtime. With the score now Sooner 59, College High 58. Another one for Jay Hubbard. Perfect. And Jay pops in two for two. And it's 60 to 58. Sooner has the first two points home in the OT. Now Foles on the outside. Tom re-enters the lineup. Now Hughes actually re-entered the lineup. Now the ball taken away by Clark Mace. Here comes Clark driving to the basket. And he drives, shoots, and scores. And is fouled. And Clark Meese has just put in his 10th field goal. His 27th point tonight. And he has a chance at a three-point play. And the foul for tripping is charged to Foles. And Clark Meese has just given Sooner a 62-58 to 58 lead, and it could be a five-point lead if he hits his foul shot at College High Calls Time. 2.16 to go in the overtime, and we'll be back after messages from these K-1 sportscasters. 14-14. Right fourteen. up, and this is Scott's first appearance in some time. Scott injured a finger. They put a cast on the finger, but he's back tonight, and he has just entered the lineup. I think it's his first game in about six games. And he's just come in because College High has turned it over on four straight possessions. 2.16 to play in the overtime. Clark Meese looking for his 28th point tonight. It's up. It's there. He has hit 8 of 11 from the free throw line. 10 field goals. 63-58. In the overtime, it's Sooner 5, College High nothing. With Bryden Dolph out, Sooner's going to be giving away some size inside with two minutes to go. Hughes off to Howell. Howell plays to Fultz. Left of the lane goes to Keck. Inside, wide open is Howell, and he scores. The little guy got wide open somehow and put the shot in. And it is now 63 to 60. And College High gets their first two of the overtime. Minute 47 to go for the basketball game, unless we come up with another deadlock. Roberts outside, works to Keith. Keith works to Robert Blackman. Robert, back to Roberts, and Roberts will rotate the ball on the dribble to the far right corner. College High maintains a man-to-man -man defensive posture. Top of the circle, Hubbard. Works it off inside to Clark. Mace Clark will just bring the ball back out. Sooner's little passing game of their own. Clark driving inside. Stop. Pop. Scores again. And Clark Mace has his 11th field goal tonight. And Clark has 30. And it's 65 to 60. Mace has almost half the Sooner total. A minute 12 to go. Now in the basketball game, Robert Hughes. Robert off to Howell. Howell back to Robert again. Now Scott Keck at the top of the circle, and a timeout is called. Timeout wanted by College High with a minute and one second to go in the overtime. And the score, Sooner 65, and College High 60. We'll be back after messages from these sportscaster sponsors. Team has one timeout to call. Keck stands at the center circle just short of the half-court line. Carson says, get out of the zone. Let's go to the man. Come out and get him. And Sooner does. Minute 11 to go. Keck takes it in play, gives it to Robert Hughes. Minute seven left. Each team with one bucket. Pryor and Meese each have scored for their teams in the second overtime. Now one minute left. 68-68. A lot of folks standing. I'm kind of comfortable seated myself. 53 seconds to go. College High again in the passing game. They're maneuvering for the shot. Inside to Pryor. Pryor turns, goes to the basket, shoots, and misses. Rebound comes down to Robert Blackman. Gets a big rebound. 38 seconds to go. Pryor had a good percentage shot. He just couldn't get it home. Roberts ahead to Hubbard. Now, what will Sooner do? Will they work for one, or are they going to spread it up? They're going to spread it out a little. 27 seconds to go. 68-68. All tied up. Here's Roberts out to me. Clark playing way outside at the moment. Now he drives right straight up the middle, passes off to Blackman instead, and they bring it around again. 16 seconds left. Off to Keith Roberts. Roberts way outside. Now to Hera, now to Clark Meese. And eight seconds to go, and Sooner calls timeout. Tim Carson and Gary Vaughn were wanting it with about 12 seconds to go. What they want to do is Sooner cannot see the clock going to the west basket at the Adams building. There are two clocks here, but they're both located on the east wall. And so... They cannot see a clock, and they're going to have to be very careful about when they launch that shot. So what Tim Carson wants to do is set it up. 
Well, it has been incredible excitement here tonight. Well, each team scored eight in the first overtime. Each team has scored two here in the second overtime. And you kind of get a feeling that it's about to wind down. Sooners have been a little expert lately winning last second shot. They defeated Claremore on that sensational one that Don was talking about. They also defeated Stillwater on a last second shot. Actually, they're two for three in last second shots at the moment. Well, that's exactly right. They've got plenty of time to get off a pretty good uh, shot. Let's see if they try to shoot the out front or go inside and uh, try to draw the foul with me. I'd have to go with the shot inside the knee, but you've got to get a good pass to get that shot off. Got to do it. Clark has been their bread and butter all night long. Although Harris certainly has outside capabilities, as does Roberts, as does Hubbard. They've got several who can take the shot. Eight seconds to go. Here's Sooner putting it in play. Robert Blackman slaps the ball. In it comes to Heron. Seven seconds left. Six seconds left. Heron shovels to the corner. Roberts takes the shot. It is off. Not good. College guy's got it. One second to go, and they call time with a second left. Roberts took the shot with about five seconds to go. It missed long. It was a baseline jumper left. And it wasn't a bad percentage shot. It was about a 10-footer off the left baseline. College I got the rebound, tried to call timeout, actually tried to move the ball up a little bit. They have one second. Ken Bruno's going to do a little politicking right now. Actually, not really politicking. He's just going to he's going to see exactly where his team is going to get the ball, exactly what they can do with it. So what they've got to do is find somebody, and I'm going to guess it's going to be Martin Pryor. Although they've got some... Well, Hughes has hit tonight. Keck is a good outside jumper, too. I don't know who will get it. Well, I'll tell you what, it's been a wild ball game. I've really been uh, excited about this. You know, a little bit earlier, I was thinking we were starting in the third overtime. Actually, that was the first overtime, and I've just forgotten exactly. But uh, when you look up on that scoreboard, see 68 to 68, uh, you've got to think uh, going to that uh, next overtime. But uh, we've seen strange things happen in basketball, and... Uh, Anything can happen, and it's been a wild and woolly uh, basketball game here this evening. And uh, I know Ken, he's back here against the wall, and I don't know if he's going to be able to make it. I'll tell you what, if we make it down to Oklahoma City and take him down there, he'll be a nervous wreck. Well, that's that's for him to pace, <laughs> won't it? All right, Hughes will launch the... No, Folks will put the ball in play. They're both standing out of bounds here for a moment. Meese will be right there to put pressure on Don. Now, where will the ball go to? Here's Pryor. He turns. He puts it in the air. It is no good off the glass. It missed. Didn't hit any iron, but Martin had it launched right. <laughs> but he missed from almost half court, misses. So here's the jump ball, Blackman versus Pryor. Set a ring again. Official Gary Easley puts the ball up and it's tapped away to Sooner. Carl Art Meese comes up with the ball in back court. My vision obstructed by the official for a moment. And Sooner goes to their two minutes and 44 seconds to play in the third overtime. 68 to 68. Not an offensive player control style foul. I say that Clark fouled Scott Howell. In such a manner as to give Howell a one and one free throw. So Howell, who has one point in overtime already, puts the foul shot up and it's perfect. Well, the guy hadn't been in action since the early part of January. But he has responded well here tonight. 69-68, College High. Next foul shot right there. And so College High grabs the overtime lead here in the third overtime, 70-68. Both these teams have been given up for loss in overtimes, and nobody will quit. Now Hubbard off the left side, looking for Meese on the high post. Off to Roberts. Two and a half minutes to go in the third overtime. Meese high post, turns, pulls. With help from Pryor guarding him, Tanajai tried to put a double team on the 32-point performance that Nice has had tonight. Now Blackman. Blackman launches a 20-footer, and it's in and out, and the rebound is Tanajai. That ball went about halfway down and then popped back out. Well, I don't think you can shoot a ball anymore in and still miss than what Robert Blackman just did. Two minutes to go. Tanajai with the lead. A two points, 70 to 68. How two free throws, the difference right now. And College Eye going to play a little keep away for the moment. Minute 51 to go. 70 68. College Eye with the ball and a two point lead. Hughes outside the fold. Back to Robert Hughes. Bounce pass. 
to Scott Howell. Minute 36 to go. High lob back door to Tech. He's open. He shoots and he misses the shot. And the rebound is Sooners. And Tech foul going after it. Scott Tech had a back door play that was wide open and he couldn't get it in. And then he fouled. A little bit of frustration foul there. And Scott just couldn't believe why he couldn't get it. And then he fouled Jay Hubbard. So Hubbard had some pressure. He's got to hit a couple of free throws. Keep his ball club going. Minute 29 left in the third overtime. It's 70 to 68. College eye on Scott Howe's two free throws leading. Hubbard to the line. Jay two for two in previous appearances. He aims, he shoots, and he hits. All three Jay Hubbard points have been at the free throw line. 70 to 69, Conley Chai by one. Hubbard will have the bonus shot now, the one and one. Jay Hubbard toes the strike. Official hands him the ball. He shoots, he hits. It bounced on the rim about four times and then settled into the net. 70 to 70. In the third overtime, a minute and 24 seconds left to play. Somebody's going to go home unhappy, somebody's going to go home real happy. Howell in trouble, got to get rid of the ball, just does ahead of the five second count. Minute 15 to go, Sooner putting some good pressure on, inside, Fold, Fold shovels it back up to Keck, Keck to Pryor, wide open, lays it in. Great pass, and a great play by Martin Pryor and Scott Keck. College high, 72, Sooner 70. Minute to go, third overtime. Sooner ball, Heron into me, Clark open, shoots, scores his 34th point tonight. And it's 72 to 72. 48 seconds to play in the third overtime. Check across the midcourt line. Scott for College High off to Steve How or to Scott Howell. And now ball knocked away by Jay Hubbard out of bounds. 38 seconds remaining in the overtime. College High has the ball and it's 72 points apiece. There were eight points scored in the first overtime. Two in the second, four so far apiece here in the third. Martin Fryer goes corner to Keck. Scott brings it back outside to Fold to Robert Hughes. Hughes, top of the circle, 27 seconds to go. 25 to go, 72-72. Hughes maintains tempo on the dribble. Ball knocked away out of bounds by Robert Blackman. 19 seconds to go, and College High has it. And timeout is called by College High with 19 seconds left. So, now the Wildcats will try to get something going. And around Ken Bruno, the Wildcats huddle. Around Tim Carson, Sooner huddle. And we'll see what's going to happen here. We've had turnovers. We've had last-second shots. We've had clutch free throws. We've had high-point performances. We've had great defensive performances. I can't think of anything we haven't had done except... A winner. I'll tell you what, we've had some nervous announcers here, too. I'll tell you what, it's been, uh, I've done a lot of basketball games in my life here around uh, Barnesville, and I'm going to take a couple of ball games of race uh, close to it. That was a championship uh, ball game at College High 1 when they won the uh, big ball game. Right uh, this is for the uh, championship of the city and uh, playing here at a neutral side. And, uh, both ball clubs have been really improving, and they're playing a lot better ball game than they played early in December. And let's just hope that uh, both ball clubs can go ahead and uh, go down to Oklahoma City. Hughes puts it in play. to Scott Howell, 18 seconds to go, 72-72. Third overtime, College High has the ball, looking for the shot. 13 seconds left. They go inside. Sooner turns it over, or they turn it over to Sooner. Pass inside for Foles. Was knocked away, and Wayne Heron came up with a basketball, and he instantly calls timeout with 10 seconds left. Now, nobody has a timeout left that they can call. Yeah, I, yeah, I know we've only got 10 seconds to go, but the way it's gone, each team's going to call about three timeouts just to try to set it up. So now the ball back in, well, into the Sooner court, if you will. And now Sooner has a chance to put it away. Each team has had many opportunities and lost them. And Ken Bruno doesn't hold College High in their huddle long. Ken a little upset with that turnover. Martin Fryer tried to put the ball inside to Fultz, and one of the Sooner hands got in there, just knocked the ball away to Wayne Harris. Ten seconds to go. Sooner's got to bring it the full length of the court now for ten seconds. 72-72, we're in the third overtime. 
And let's see how this game will be won or lost. Heron will put the ball in play. Neath will station in the center circle along the left sideline will be Heron. Here's the ball coming into Blackman. Ten seconds to go. There's the ball working ahead to Keith Roberts, and a foul was called on Robert Hughes with six seconds to go. A collision foul at midcourt. A pass was just about to get away, and Hughes went after it. So did Keith Roberts. Keith definitely had position, and Robert Hughes made the contact, and the foul resulted. So now here's the pressure throw for Keith Roberts. Six seconds to go, so there's still time for College High to get the ball back and come back and do something themselves with it. Roberts to the line. He will be shooting one and one. He's Roberts tonight, one for two in previous shots. It's up, it's short, not good. Meese puts it up, it's short, not good. And a jump ball will be called with three seconds to go. A jump ball has been called. I don't know exactly why. Meese got the rebound. He put a shot up, it was short. No shot went in. So they will jump at the Sooner line with three seconds to go. It'll be Meese versus Pryor with three seconds to go. It's at the Sooner side of the floor. The two biggest guys for each team will be jumping. Now three seconds to play the pass. Controlled by Colley Kai. Scott Keck with one second to go. It's in the air. And oh, it's in and out. It just missed. A half-court shot by Scott Keck was in and out. And we have our fourth overtime. Oh, what, two more points? No, four points. Three. So here is the fourth overtime. Don, I don't remember in our six years together doing a four-overtime game. That's the most I can recall. So we work here at the field. I tell you what, do they have a 12 o'clock curfew? It's a quarter to 11 here right now, and uh, I tell you what, no one's leaving to go home if they uh, miss the uh, 10 o'clock news. They're going to stay around and uh, watch it go down the walk. College Jai has gone with a smaller lineup. It has not hurt them, obviously. For that matter, Sooner really kind of has two with Aaron in there. Tip controlled by Robert Blackman. He tipped it off to Jay Hubbard, and he got it right back to Robert, who had been in the center circle to start with. The Sooners got the ball to start this fourth overtime. Heron in the left corner. Inside, Blackman puts one up off the glass too hard. Rebound, Tom Fultz, college shot, and the Wildcats get it back. Each of these teams has had the game won and lost more times than I can count. 2.34 to go. Fourth overtime. Tech inside baseline. Steps between two players. Shoots. Scores. And he's fouled. And it might be a three-point play. Let's see if the basket will be allowed. I think so. It is good. Scott Tech gets the three-pointer. And Robert Blackman fouls out of the ball game on his fifth personal foul. Robert played a good defensive ball game tonight. 74 to 72. College High has just taken the lead here in the fourth overtime. 2.29 to go. And at the line will be Scott Keck shooting one. I'll tell you what, Scott really wanted that uh, ball. You know, he missed the shot that would have won the ball game for him, you know, a little bit earlier and uh, had the backdoor play and just uh, went up there and threw it too high on the board. And uh, I'll tell you what, if he hits this, that's going to give him a three-point bang. But I guarantee you the way things have happened with the five points difference that uh, Sooner had in that one overtime, but College High came back and uh, Sooner came back uh, four points to send the ball game in the first overtime. It's... Uh, Nothing is over till the uh, final shot, and Scott Keck nearly hit that tremendous uh, half-court shot just before the, at the uh, end of the uh, other overtime, and uh, Tim Clark's going to take it full minute because we've seen it happen year, all year long, and uh, so it's going to be. Bill, we might uh, tell the folks, we'll be covering a lot of basketball next week with the uh, tournaments going around down at, over at Miami and down at Union, and uh, you might try to tell them exactly what we're going to try to do. Well, we'll have action both the well all three nights, we hope. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, covering college high, Sooner boys and girls teams at regional play. Here's Keck's foul shot. It does not go down, but Martin Pryor gets the rebound and kicks it back outside, and college high, even more important than the free throw, keeps possession. 74-72. College high up by two. Robert Hughes out to Tom Fultz. 2.15 to go. That's like about a quarter and a half the way this game has been going. Kali Chai with the ball at a two-point lead. Hughes dribbles all the way down to the right corner. Kali Chai in a passing game that's keeping the ball rotated from corner to top to corner. Holt in the free throw circle. Works it back out to Hughes. Minute 57 to go. Sooner had one possession. They missed his shot. 
Inside, oh, there's Holtz wide open, lays it in. And he's fouled. By Jay Hubbard, I believe. Might be Keller. Tom Foles did a great job of working his way inside, and Foles now has 12 points. It's his best game of the year. And Jay Hubbard has just fouled out. And he becomes the second Spartan to exit in as many calls. So College High has just taken a 76-72 lead. And Tom Fultz can make it a five-point advantage with a minute and 50 seconds to go. And right now, College High has momentum. But I've never seen faster momentum switching. That's exactly right. Let's look at uh, Fultz. I don't believe he's missed the free throw, has he, Bill? I know he's come in and hit some. He's four for five. He's four for five. Tom has 12. It's his best game of the year, offensively. And I was going over the Sooner or over the College High book, and, you know, he went through several strings of games in which he did not score, in fact, in which he did not play very much. Well, Bill, you know, he wasn't covering the games I was reading in the newspaper, and I thought maybe something was happening. He was hurt, but uh, he was playing a little bit, but he wasn't scoring. But uh, he's come in and got some big points. He's really driven, uh, gone to the basket, and, uh, whew, what a ball game. One fifty to go in the uh, overtime once again. The fourth overtime it is. Steve Burkett comes in. Tim Carson calls Steve one of his best, if not his best, defensive player. But Steve's been out with the flu. He didn't make the Miami trip even last week. Now, after taking the 60 seconds to stop after the foul, after the foul out, Sooner calls a timeout. And you know, you can see it on all these players' faces. These kids are tired. He has 40 points. And we are into an incredible <laughs> overtime. And we'll be back after messages from Gus. Here's the tap that opens the fourth overtime. The college eye control. Sooner had it for a moment. Scott Howell tips the ball back to Tom Fultz. This is overtime number five. There's six points each in the last overtime. We have played almost a third half. Or we'll have by the time this overtime is over. 16 minutes and a half. Here's Fultz, 15 footer, popped it right in. Tom Fultz, 14 points for Fultz tonight. 80 78, College Guy back into the lead. We will have played 15 minutes worth of overtime. And now, Keith Roberts thought about a shot, didn't take it. Aaron, top of the circle, lets her go, missed the shot, rebound. Keith Roberts on the back, he didn't have position. And Keith. Picks up the foul. He just didn't have good position on the college eye player as the two went for the board. And there'll be a free throw at the college eye side of the floor. Roberts has picked up his fourth foul. Now let's see. Will it be prior? No, it'll be youth. So, you think back to Tom Fultz's missed free throw <laughs> with a minute 50 to go on the fourth overtime. I need a stenographer here to keep track of all the highlights of this for us. Use free throw shooting. Up, around, and off. Not good. Rebound, Geller, Sooner. So Sooner again has the opportunity at the tying shot. 2.07 to play. Roberts off to Birkin. College I try to cut down on Mises' total little by fronting him and backing him both. That's got to leave somebody else open. Minute 53 to go. College High 80 to 78 on Tom Fultz's jumper. And College High just took it away. Keith Roberts. Tom Fultz anticipated a pass just perfectly. And stepped in front. And now, ball knocked away from Howell on a good double team. All behind the back pass to Beast. And he's got it and the basket counts. And he also fouled. So Clark Meese gets his 42nd point. His 17th field goal, he has tied the ball game up, but they're going to catch him on a charge, I believe. It's 80 to 80. The basket will count. Clark still seated underneath the Sooner basket. The basket is good, and 80 to 80 is the score. And Clark Meese finishes with 42 points tonight. That has been one of the most incredible performances by a local player. In fact, Don, speaking of things I don't remember, 
Can you remember a game in the last six years where a local player got 40 or more points? No, I can't, uh, Bill, and he just had a tremendous the game. I tell you what, I thought it was a good call that time. But Clark got in there and got the ball, and he just uh, fell over a little uh, Scott Howell, and uh, Scott hit some big free throws, and uh, it's 80-80 uh, to 80 on the uh, scoreboard, and uh, that's a big... Uh, item that they've got now the ball game if you're a uh, college high fan because he just had one of the greatest ball games that you could ever expect and uh, living up to the thing and just think about it to bill he's going to be around one four years oh, and uh, i've seen a lot of great uh, big men for college high i mean for most ball clubs bob pritchard i think was a, one of the strongest uh, one of the best the big men we had he was about six six but uh, clark the way he's developed he's going to be the uh, best uh, big man we've had since I've been around Barbara. He's thing. still growing, too. He's still growing. All right, here's Howell with the big free throws for Kyle High. Shot up, shot in. Scott Howell is at five straight free throws in overtime. 81-80, to 80, Conley shot. Minute 34 left, fifth overtime. Howell again, right through. He's six for six, dead-eye perfect. 82-80, to 80, Conley shot. Roberts across the midcourt line. Jerry Eckert checked in to replace Clark Meese. Now, how will Sooner react with Clark out of there? Somebody's got to take charge. Eckert out to Heron. Heron checked from going in on the baseline by Howell. Roberts off to Eckert. A minute 13 to go. Heron pops the 12-footer. Got it! So maybe Heron will pick up the slack. 82 to 82. A minute five to go on the fifth overtime of this basketball game. One of the most incredible we've ever broadcast. Check across the, the midcourt line, and his pass intended for Pryor got away, and Keith Roberts came up with it. 53 seconds to go. Roberts looking at the clock. Gary Vaught waving him on. 47 seconds to play. Now let's see if Sooner will try to just take care of the basketball. Yeah, Keith Roberts circling around outside on the dribble. Now Keith just holding on with the dribble with 35 seconds to go. Jerry Eckert out to offer help if needed. So far, none needed. 82 to 82 in the fifth overtime. 26 seconds to play in overtime number five. Roberts outside. Keith going to give it to Eckert. 18 seconds to go. Now again, Keith has the ball back. Sooner obviously looking for one last shot, and they call time at the 10-second mark, which is a good call. So with 10 seconds to go, how many times have we set up the last-second shot in this ball game? This is better than any 10 practices for both these teams. Both teams have had the opportunity to set up the shot. That was Gary Easley. I put in for overtime. I'll tell you what, that's right. I just, we're going to have to ask Gary at the ball game if he's had a better ball game to cover. And he's done a calm job out there. And uh, there's been some calls that have gone uh, a lot of ways for both ball clubs. But overall, I think the officials have done a, a great job of calling this ball game here this evening. And uh, it's a shame that one of these ball clubs is going to have to lose, uh, Bill. And uh, let's just hope that the one that does lose doesn't lose its momentum. And, uh, come back and uh, we'll see him later on in the week. Now, College High just set something up. Greg Brewer went over to the officials. He says, if that ball goes through, we want a call to call a timeout. He informed both officials about it. They both nod. They said, that's fine. That's just fine. So, unless Sooner gets the ball to drop just as time runs out, College High will try something. Full court. Sooner pressure. College High will put it on him. There's the entry pass, 10 seconds to go, 82-82, this is overtime number five. Heron puts it in the air, it is off the glass and missing, and it is Kyle Chai's ball, and one second is left on the clock. Kyle Chai has one second left, Kyle Chai coaches thinking they might have two. <laughs> Heron missed the shot with about five seconds to go, the ball came out to the corner, put it in play from their half court. And that might be a costly error if Sooner gets this shot down. Now Heron will put it in play. As Keck just threw it, didn't hit anybody. He got to bring it back. There's the ball underneath, and Keith Roberts did not get a shot in. Overtime number six coming up. The guy controls the tip that starts overtime number six. So here we 
go. Kalachai, maneuvers for their shot. Underneath. And there's Foles, banking it and hitting it. Tom Foles puts the ball through the hoop for his sixth of the night. That's his sixth field goal. He's come up with 16 points in all. And College High goes up 84 to 82. Keith Roberts in the corner. From the corner, in and out. Rebound tips around. Martin Pryor gets it for College High. And Keith Roberts steals it back for Sooner and gives it to Jerry Eckert, and he scores. And it's 84 to 84. The injuries for both these clubs are just so tired. They're just kind of at a half trot coming up and down the floor. The junior varsities might have to finish up. 2.09 to go. In overtime, number six. Pryor inside, turns, hook, scores! Martin Pryor, a sensational shot. His ninth point. 86-84 college shot. Everybody's tried everything. Playing the ball, slowing the ball down, passing the ball quickly, looking for the shot. You name it, if it's been tried before in basketball, it's been done. Heron, 15-footer, hits the back of the iron, doesn't go. College high, Scott Kent gets the rebound. A minute 41 to go in this basketball game. Sixth overtime. That's right, if you're just driving in from somewhere and coming into our coverage area, I said six overtimes. 86 to 84, College High leads Sooner. Holtz inside, good position on the baseline, turns, hooks, and misses. Rebound, Geller to the floor, and Randy comes up with a good, tough muscle rebound. Minute 20 to go. 86 84, College High by two, Sooner has the ball. Roberts across the midcourt line to Jerry Eckert. Eckert, top of the circle, Heron lets her fly, switch. 86 86. Wayne Heron scoring well, has his ninth. One minute, three seconds to go in the sixth overtime. Across the midcourt line, Scott Keck has the basketball. High lob back for Hughes, but intercepted by Keith Roberts. A pass that Ken Bruno didn't really want to see. Now with 48 seconds to go, Sooner's going to take some air out of the ball with a game tied 86 off. Why don't we see this score on the AP? Huh. 36 seconds left. 86 points apiece. Sooner again maneuvering for a last second shot. I can't recall how many times teams have had chances for last second game winning points. 24 seconds remaining. Roberts. Double and triple team. Gets it back to Heron. 18 seconds to go. Heron. Off to Eckert. 13 seconds left. Sooner will call time around 10, I think. Now Roberts. No, eight seconds. Steal by Hughes. Robert Hughes drives and lays it up and misses. Tips it up and misses. Tips it up again and misses. And a foul was called. A foul was called. There's no time left. A foul was called. Let's see which way the foul was called, though, I think. Well, I don't know. I'm going to wait and see. A foul was called with what should be one second left on the clock. Now, let's see. We'll listen in on the conversation and see what the deal is. I'm trying to get Ken Dean and Don Piles both down there. There's no time left on the clock. Hughes stole the ball, drove it in and missed the layup. A tip also missed. And then, as time was running out, I spotted an official with the clenched fist up, which indicates a foul. Will it be two or a one and one? Well, we'll try to hear. Don was trying to listen in on the conversation, too, and I don't know if he could get close enough to the huddle to be able to hear it. But apparently a foul is called. The officials now huddled. I don't know. Let's see. We have College High's Robert Hughes standing at the line. He will take a free throw. Will it or won't it? A foul was obviously called on the follow shot. I don't know on who. Tim Carson trying to get a walking call. And they're going to call what? The officials huddle together. One official has a arm raised in the air. There should be three seconds left on the clock, I think is what they're saying. Hughes will have the free throw, but I, I'll get the announcement. No. No, he says they're going to send it into overtime again. So apparently there was no time left as the foul was called. Well, I thought there was, because I thought I saw the arm go up with a second left, but the officials apparently deciding that no, that was not the case, 
They put three more minutes back up, and here comes overtime number seven. Don. I'll tell you what, Charlie Chai had two great opportunities to win that ball game, and they got the good shot down there, and Hughes banked it up, and they got a tip that uh, didn't go up, and uh, ooh, I'll tell you what. The I state overtime record is eight, Ken Dean has just found out from somebody. That <laughs> called a foul, so they worked well together and teamed as officials should. And they got together on their own and decided that's how it was to be. And here's College High. And there's some idiot throwing a coin and missed me by about three feet. Out of his south stands. Now College High's Robert Hughes open inside. Gets a two-pointer. And Gary Easley's going to retrieve the coin that just missed us. Many of you got radios up in the south stands and you see anybody around you throw a coin, punch one of them out for me, will you? He just missed it. <laughs> 88 to 86. College high up by two with two minutes and 37 seconds to go. And Sooner has the ball back. And Sooner works the shuffle, top of the circle. Jerry Eckert off to Keith Roberts. Keith into the lane, beats Geller, loose ball. Geller gets it back, puts it up, and scores. And it's tied up again, 88-88. 30 points in overtime for each team. Two minutes and 14 seconds to go in overtime number seven. Scott Howell looks down to the right corner. There's Martin Pryor. Martin drives, banks, hits, and College High has the lead again. 90 to 88. Again, a two-point lead for College High. Minute 53 to go in overtime number seven. Jerry Eckert to the outside. Loops the pass over to Keith Roberts. Picked up by Robert Hughes. Keith to the top of the circle. Works it out to Wayne Heron. Heron drives baseline. Nice drive. Ball off Geller's hands, but glances right to Keith Roberts. Now Heron, free throw line jumper, in and out. Rebound tipped around, and College High, Scott Howell comes up with a basketball. Jones has played well from the scoring. High 92, Sooner 88, 93-88, as Fryer completes the three-point play. So now Sooner has the pressure on. They've got to hit. They've got to get the ball back. And Keith Roberts, outside Dan Kelleher, junior varsity members just checked in. Dan popped the 12-footer, in and out. Rebound is taken by Ecker. He shoots and misses. A ball to the floor, and College High goes after it. Sooner goes after it. Tie up. Tonight indicates. Now, College High makes the entry pass. Three-point game again. And uh, track, he was double-teamed. He was double-pressured. And he dragged the pivot foot with 48 seconds to go. 93 to 90. College High's lead is three, but Sooner's got the ball back. Eight overtimes is a state record. We're in the seventh one here at the Adams Building. He'll talk about this one for a long time. 42 seconds to go. Roberts launches the shot, misses, rebound, College High. Out of there with it is Howell. Ball knocked away from him. And Roberts has it. Now a foul call on one of the College High players. With 33 seconds to go in overtime number seven. It's on Roberts. Most of the folks are still here. Roberts aims, shoots, hits. 93-91. College High lead back to two. Both teams have had five-point leads dissipate on them in overtime. 33 seconds to go. Another shot up. Roberts got a boat. And Sooner calls their timeout. Now, Keck will put it in play, and then it comes to Martin Pryor. 30 seconds to go. Back to Scott Keck. Keck will be picked up by Steve Burkett. Keck will drive it across the midcourt line. 26 seconds to go. Sooner will have to foul here somewhere along the way. College high by one, 93 to 92. There's Keck open down in the corner with 17 seconds to go. College high with 15 seconds to go. Now a high lob and Robert Hughes is fouled either by Steve Burkett or Keith Roberts. Burkett committed the foul. And not a bad foul at this juncture of the ball game with 12 seconds to go. Pressure is his turn. Everybody's been in this pressure cooker tonight. Robert Ames shoots and misses it. Sooner's got the ball. Ten seconds to go. Nine seconds to go. Kelleher down. Eight seconds. Seven seconds. Kelleher shoots. Scores with five seconds to go. And College High calls timeout. Dan Kelleher, a junior varsity player, timeout's been called. Three seconds left on the... 
An exhausting and a grueling ball game. So let's see how Kyle Chai will play it. Robert Hughes will put it in play. There'll be three seconds to go. Tim Carson trying to wave his pressure back a little bit. And it comes to Scott Keck. Three seconds to go, two to go. Last second shot is in the air, and Shorn and Silver wins in seven overtime, 94 to 93. And Dan Kelleher, a junior varsity player who scored only two points all night long, scored the game-winning shot with...